be on how to get uh, Volcano 3 by FabFilter, one of the best filters out there. They have filter in their name. What do you expect? Um, how to get it to key track, to keyboard track. If you don't know what that is, bear with me. You're about to find out. Okay, so we got a volcano, right? And then I'm going to put it on this sample of noise because this is going to allow me to show you what it sounds like truly when the, the resonant peak becomes a note. So if I make this a band pass here, and I increase the slope here, and I start sweeping this around, we're going to get a nice uh, resonant peak. Now I'm going to want to turn the volume output down uh, right here, just because this is going to boost a lot of extra gain. So you can see it'll tell you on the peak value how much you're boosting. So now that we've turned it down, Now you can see that um, if I don't boost it more, it doesn't really become a nice sine wave type oscillation. So let's boost it up with another bell. <coughs> so I get a bell. Reduce the slope. And now if I get a slider, which is basically the macros inside these modulators, I get the slider and control both of these. Then we can move it around. Oops. So that's what I want to work with the key tracking, right? I want to be able to maybe boost resonant peaks out of atonal noises and then play a sequence that's harmonically in tune or something like that. Or maybe it's as simple as just wanting to play an arpeggiator. Uh, so let me get a square. Let me get a quick square wave out. And let's get key tracking. So I'm going to grab the square Maybe do a double square with them um, detuned slightly. This would be like a Reese. I'm just plugging in my keyboard. So if we, I'm gonna make this mono, monophonic. So if we put this volcano on here, right? And I'm just gonna delete these and grab a low pass. See, as I play higher and higher, it's cutting off more and more. So it would be nice for this to follow around. So what we're gonna want is the MIDI source. And this is a modulator, if you click it here, it'll open up its little window and you have a selection of mod wheel, pitch bend, velocity, aftertouch, keyboard tracking, KB track, a little picture of a keyboard, and controller, which is like a MIDI controller direct. So we're gonna choose keyboard track. Well, it's not working still. So what's the deal? Okay, so this is the key right here. I think you can either hit MIDI Learn. Um, 
No. There's only one way I know of doing this, and that is to send it MIDI with an external instrument plugin, one of Ableton's instrument plugins. So we're gonna go and group this, grab an instrument, external instrument, out of the instruments folder. And you can see right here it says MIDI 2. And instead of sending this outside of Ableton, we're gonna send it to the channel we're on, whatever that may be. And then you can see now in the second drop down it says 1 dash volcano 3. It's still not working, so what we need to do is modulate the cutoff of this filter, right? So let's go to modulate it. And you can see there's the second line now. But if we hover right over one of these harmonics, See how it's not moving along with the the keyboard tracking like we want. It's moving less than the actual notes are moving, less of a distance. So what we want to do is increase the amount right here on this attenuator to one. So fill it all the way up. And now what this means is we can isolate a harmonic like the fifth harmonic or like the third harmonic. It sounds like a fifth, but it's a third harmonic. Right, so we can get multiple filters in here. We could have a low, uh, high pass. And we just modulate that. Remember to increase it by all the way. That way, even if we play real low, filter is going to track around and this can be really useful. Now when you're using multiple filters you may want a slider and control those with a slider so that you can like move them both at the same time if you want. So one thing to know about this is it is monophonic. So if I grab a polyphonic patch instead of a monophonic patch and start playing chords, it's going to follow the last note played. So if I do a glissando right here, whereas if I do it backwards, starting high and then going low, it's going to follow the last one. Another thing to be aware of, if I make this monophonic again, turn the glide on. If I have a glidey patch, the filter is not going to glide along. There's no glide settings in this keyboard track. That is the one thing I would recommend. I would highly recommend FabFilter implement a glide into the keyboard tracking. You can see how it snaps right away. So last thing I want to show you before I finish this is how cool it can be to kind of use a noise instead. So let's put a noise instead of this phase plant. And now I'm going to turn this to a sampler by right clicking at the, the header and choosing simpler to sampler. Turn snap off. I'm going to go on the scale for the tuning. 
to zero. And that means it's not going to pitch the sample around at all. It's just going to play it back at the original pitch no matter what MIDI notes I play. And we're going to get all our MIDI from our, our tonality from this filter. So this could be nice with like a little reverb. And different filters are gonna sound different. So instead of doing it like that, let's use a bell. key track on the bell as well. So different filters are going to sound more or less tonal. Those were starting to crackle and distort. So I'm switching to the clean filter. Right, so um, the clean filter can sound pretty tonal to the point where we can make melodies straight out of noise. Then you can play around with things like pitching the noise up and down. is coming through. Sorry, I thought the audio wasn't coming through for a sec. So the other things we can do uh, are add envelopes. And this envelope generator has an option to choose MIDI right here in this little box right here. And if you're sending it MIDI already with this external instrument right here, in the instrument rack that is receiving the same MIDI as whatever instrument you're playing and then sending it to the volcano. What that means is we can select right here MIDI on the sidechain input and then this will trigger every time I hit a MIDI note. So we can like map that to some things. For instance, the we could have another envelope and like 
set it to MIDI as well and send it to the peak of that resonant peak and then turn the peak down so that we get more of a plucky peak. This is like pinging a filter in modular, kind of. So you can see we get this nice percussive And this can be pretty nice combined with a synth. So maybe something like chromophone. So they could put that in there. So you see they're not in tune, so I'm going to tune the filter with this slider. get some really epic pads here if we like turn the size and then the decay up more of a delay sound so let's get timeless and you need to uh, or keep in mind that all the new fab filter plugins they have this same MIDI source and if I wanted to send like you know select key track here but you can see uh, it's not receiving MIDI so what we have to do is we have to duplicate this external instrument and now you can see in the second little drop down here in Ableton we have a selection between the first and second fab filter plugin. So I'll choose timeless for one, make sure the other one's still going to the volcano. And now I can actually key track on this filter as well, the filter that is just filtering the delay path. So what that means is I can like really crank this feedback up. And then maybe just blend this delay in slightly. And I want some actually some hold on this peak. So let's let's get this peak again. And then let's reduce this. That sounds pretty cool.
you know, we could have like an envelope generator. We can select MIDI and then control the feedback. Have it be longer of a decay here. Release two. Either you want that uh, to be a patch, or you can just sample these two. You know, and have like a few different pitches to choose from. And then, you know, once you sample them out, you can put them in samplers and bend them around that way, like this. The difference there is it's going to sound like a sample because the, the speed of it's going to be changing. But really cool way to like make some weird sounding perks, some little notes, you can play a lead on this. nice for like chords too um, if I go and make the voices like seven maybe pick the more tonal one oh it's clipping here hold on some nice chords. Thank you. 
sine wave you get more upper harmonics so we could try doing that <laughs> so many things you can key track once you start playing around with it. Thank <laughs> you. 
change the LFO rate so you know we could like do this and then or actually you can send the MIDI from a different instrument so let's send it from our our lead so duplicate one of these and send it to not the channel we're on but the other channel that we're doing our chords with and like send it to the volcano and just now check this out we can get it to track uh, we get the LFO rate to track. Thank you. 
All those melodics were made out of just filter resonance and some Moog noise. You can get the Moog noise on my Patreon, along with tons of other samples. And yeah, if you like my sounds, support me on Patreon. If you want to learn more stuff directly, get feedback on your music, I do lessons on Patreon. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, comment, like, uh, share, all the good stuff. And yeah, till next time on Sephiroth. Big up, big up. Peace.